Hey guy from New Plastic and today we'll go underground and make some velvet. First off, I have a whole velvet pack you can check out on my Gumroad along with 10 other different fabrics packs, all 100% procedural for Octane and Cinema 4D. They look ridiculously good and cover a vast variety of fabric textures like satin, knits, weaved, suits, shears, and much more. Overall, there are 159 materials, which you can also get as a full pack for a cheaper price. Since they're procedural, they're infinitely tileable with no repetition endlessly customizable and you can render them at any resolution without breaking them so yeah this is my favorite pack of mine super proud of it if you feel like it can help you i'll leave the links in the description also you can buy some of the pins i made on my other gum road so check them out as well beyond that consider supporting on patreon or membership where you can find these project files free products and other cool perks but mostly help me make more and better content for y'all follow me on instagram at ojang or the channel at brand new plastic subscribe share comment go clean your car interior i bet it's nasty as shit let's go So just like satin, the appearance of velvet is achieved by the way the fabric is woven. So all we can do is try to fake it as closely as possible. But we're just not going to get a truly realistic velvet sheen. If you really study velvet, you'll realize how incredible complex the fabric acts with light. And as far as I tried, it's not really achievable with octane. But we can get close. So velvet comes in all sorts of looks, crushed, burnout, penne, velveteen. It can be made from silk, which will have this signature lustrous sheen, or from cotton which will be more toned down and dull. All these looks you can fake by dialing in the method we're going to look at today. So let's start by adding a universal material to the fabric, BRDF mode to STD. Let's start by adding a composite texture with let's say five layers just to be safe. And let's turn off these four and start with the first one. I'll start by getting the basic sheen look with the fall off node and I'll just pull the factor down to make it brighter. Now let's add a marble node to the second layer and with this I'll just quickly fake the weave pattern. You can use any type of pattern here but I notice this rib look often happens with velvet and you can make the ribs really small if you don't want much of that effect or make them larger if you want to get more of a corduroy look. So yeah I'll just make them really small for now and you can test out different blending modes. I ended up with add mode but soft light and overlay can work out great too. Test it out for yourself. Okay, add an octane noise to the third layer, change blending mode to something like overlay, increase the contrast, maybe multiply will be a better blend. Let's increase the contrast with a gradient node, scale it down. Okay, we'll get back to this. Let's plug the same noise to the fourth layer using a UVW transform, scale it way, way down, change blend to add. And if you really crush the blacks and whites using a gradient node, we'll get that white fuzz all over. Okay, let's add a gradient node to the whole thing and give it some color. I like a more saturated look for the brighter areas to give it more luster, but play around with it. Some velvets are more dull or add two different colors to get a more complex two-tone sheen like red and yellow. Okay, way too shiny. Let's plug the marble node to the roughness channel using a gradient node. Make the black some bright gray and do it again into the specular channel and reverse the nodes and make them much darker. Okay, let's increase the contrast and details on this noise. And we're starting to get something. Let's plug the marble node into the bump map with, gra with a gradient node as well. Okay. Let's make some space here and add another composite texture with two layers. Plug it into the gradient of the third original layer. Plug the noise into the first layer of this composite and let's add a Cinema 4D noise into the second layer. Let's change the blend mode to something like difference so we're getting a really complex mix of both noises. And you can play with any of these arithmetic blends. Maybe divide. Okay, let's change the Cinema 4D noise type to stuple, which I like for fabric stuff. Let's try subtract blend and maybe make the bottom noise less detailed. Okay, and let's lower the contrast on the gradient. Okay, let's look at the whole thing. The overall contrast seems pretty low. Let's increase the contrast on the color gradient. Maybe the fall off note is too dark. Hmm. not really there yet. 
Let's try and add some sheen from the sheen channel. Plug these gradients into the sheen roughness and bump. Maybe actually make a new gradient and lower the white intensity. Use that as the sheen bump. It added something, but it's not there yet. Let's add this whole thing into the metallic channel. Some metallicness works nice on velvets. But lower the white intensity. Let's up the color contrast on the color gradient. I think the whole composite system is too bright. Let's lower the marble node opacity. And also this top fuzz noise. Okay, yeah, even more. And yeah, this is definitely going the right way. The sheen is way, way too strong now. So let's plug the darker gradient to the sheen roughness as well so it spreads less. And there you go. Maybe a bit brighter on the gradient. Let's change the third layer blend to overlay to increase the contrast and make the Cinema 4D noise smaller. Bring back some of the details on the octane noise. Okay, I like where this is going. Let's add another node at the very end of the color gradient. And we're really close. You can add a displacement node to get some more texture. This time I'll keep it at texture displacement. Make it super low and change resolution to 4K. As you might know, I don't like to use texture displacement procedurally since you have to bake the textures. But since this whole texture is based on a very simple UV set, the bake texture should work okay. And we're gonna get way more details without needing to subdivide the fuck out of this mesh. So we'll use the marble node with a bake texture, set resolution to 2K for now, change to HDR. And yeah, the ribs are much more pronounced now. You can try to use this noise system from the third layer as well. So we're getting a more general noisy texture all over. Might work better for this. Now we can also lower the opacity of the third layer. Yeah, this is looking cool. What if we plug the whole composite system to the displacement? Not a huge difference. Okay, let's add a gradient node to the fall off node. Change type to cubic, which will increase the contrast and bring the mid gray a bit further up so we're slightly clamping it into the whites and then make the whole fall off brighter too. Okay, and maybe clamp out the color gradient too. Okay, that's pretty cool. And we can add a color correction node for good measure and make larger changes with it. Maybe lower the saturation a bit. Yeah, this feels a bit more realistic. And our displacement system is very subtle so we can increase the height on that. Okay, not bad, not bad. Actually looks really good. So I ended up adding more details off camera. So let's go over them real quick. So this is our original composite system. I plugged it into a new composite system and blended it with a scratches node, which is distorted with a distorted UV projection node. Just to add even more texture and fiber detail to the whole thing. And I used a difference blend mode, which makes the details bright where the background is dark and dark where the background is bright. So we're getting details all over. The thing is this blend mode inverts the bottom layer, which will throw off the whole fall off look. So I added an invert node to the first layer. So we're double inverting, which means we're back to normal. Uh, I made the brightest point on the color gradient even brighter, so you can see all this fiber detail is not as saturated as the bright teal color. Nice touch. Now, very important thing I forgot to do is to change the Cinema 4D noise space to UV. If you leave it at texture space, it'll float when the mesh is moving around and it won't stick to the surface. Mm, I played with the fall off gradient and I ended up creating a separate composite mixing the marble node and these noises and used it on the displacement channel just to get a bit more control over the displacement details. What else? I removed the metallic channel and I think that's it. Okay, now if we want to make the velvet look more worn out and distressed, we can add another composite texture with two layers 
plug the color system into the first layer and the marble node into the second layer. And use this noise here with a UVW transform as a mask of the second layer. And if we crush the contrast on the mask, actually reverse the nodes so we're left with tiny white areas which expose the second layer. You can see we're left with the white ribs exposed like we're exposing the underlying weave. And if we add a third layer to the displacement composite and use the same gradient as the third layer, actually no, we'll plug the UVW transform using a new gradient so we'll get black spots instead of white spots. Change the blend mode to multiply and now we're pushing down those areas where the underlying weave is exposed. So it really feels more tactile, like the plush layer is kind of disintegrating. Just make sure the color areas are smaller than the displacement holes, otherwise it'll look weird. Yeah, look at that. This is crazy good. So yeah, you can really get some extremely nice detail if you experiment and take your time with it and really control every aspect of the look. That's why we love the procedural way. Okay, that's it. Hope you learned something. We're slowly going through more and more fabrics and I'm here for it. Check out the velvet pack and the rest of the fabrics packs on my Gumroad. Check out the enamel pins. Consider supporting on Patreon and a luxurious recognition for all my lustrous patrons and members. Yin and Gong, Guillaume Lopez, Dave Toro, Marie Robbins, Svoyas Chari, Eric Hu, Daniel Larry, Minky Kim, Hader, Leo, Peter Odiger, Yunji Shin, Chris Hyde, Alda Boyd, Arong Ferong, Katie Royal, Derek Fredrickson, Biko Sun, Ruby Nine, Lucas Ranche, Tell Me More, Jessica Pandrath, Bori, Jinquan Wu, Bruno Arredondo, Checky Aha, Domestic God in the House, Toby T, Farid Ali, David Lesser, Adam Trexler, Everyday Swiss, Seamus Johnson, General Zods, 3D Monkey Biz, Arlen, Suki Violet Su, The 22 Design, Joel Rieger, Adrian Desolet, Derek Schultz, Maurice Hickendorf, Estudi Image, Matus Stratosajewski, Blue Hamel, Mark Reagan, Joshua Akoy, Punksicorn M. Siri, Webb, Kong Idiot, Maddie DeGualdre, Cho Yun Jun, NZE, IEMN, Golfino666, Ali Esser, Leandro Marimon, May, Balgasm, Shane, Harry Cooper, Anna Kazeka, Oisin O'Brien, Joel Taylor, Faux Major, Kevin E. Quintero, Jeremy Bajana, Christina, Yatsu, Raquel Vela, Ezekiel Grand, Alex Jean Youngcho, Matessa Arcozzi, Onur Koroglu, Takeyuki Chiba, Pablo Ritter, Sophia Wilton, David Hughes, Kim Je, Riverstar 2190, LSD Hani, Mons of Canada, Alice Saturnus, Hugo Esconde, Ozan Shahin, and everybody else on the list. Thank you so much. I love you. Have a great day. Peace.